Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at how to find impulse from a force time graph. So let's get started. It says here that if the force acting on an object is measured during its time of contact with another object or surface, a force time graph can be plotted. We can use force time graphs to determine impulse, i.e. the object's change in momentum. Now, the first important result to be aware of is that impulse is equal to the area under a force time graph, a bit like how distance or displacement is equal to the area under a speed or velocity time graph. So I put this result in a box just because it's important and I've said impulse equals the area under an FT graph. Now, you won't get this on the relationship sheet in your exam. You need to remember this. And remember what we mean by the area under the graph is the area enclosed by between the line or the curve and the x-axis. We don't mean things under the x-axis. Now the next thing to note is that in reality, forces are not constant. So we end up with curved lines on our force time graphs as shown here. So if you were to measure the force between two objects over a short time in a lab, then you would get force time graphs that look like this with curved lines. So in this case, we've got a large average force applied over a short time. Whereas in this one, we've got a small average force applied over a longer time. But in this example, the area is under both graphs. So the area between this curved line and the x-axis and between this curved line and the x-axis are the same. So because these are equal, the impulse is therefore the same because we're saying the impulse is equal to the area under the graphs despite the fact that these are two different shapes and that's just because the area in this narrower shape is equal to the area in this wider shape. However, to make these graphs easier to analyze and to calculate areas, you will often be dealing with straight lines, i.e. constant forces instead of curved lines, because curved lines would be quite difficult to analyze, and in fact, we leave that for advanced hire, where you have to use calculus techniques to analyze them. So we're gonna be dealing with straight lines whenever you see force time graphs in higher physics. Now, an example for force time graphs to consider is this thing here. So it says, consider three balls of the same mass, a golf ball, tennis ball, and sponge ball, all of which are struck with a club at the same velocity. The force time graph for this situation would look like the one below. The red lines are for the golf ball, the green lines are for the tennis ball, and the blue lines for the sponge ball. And it says that by plotting the lines on the same graph, we can compare the three cases. Now, it should be quite obvious that from these three balls, the golf ball will be the hardest material, and so when it is struck, it provides the largest average force over the shortest time. So there will be the largest force on contact between the club and the golf ball acting over the shortest time. So we've shown that on the graph because we've got the shortest time here and the largest average force. The next second hardest material is going to be the tennis ball because it's softer than the golf ball. And so this is going to produce a slightly smaller average force over a slightly longer time because the tennis ball will be able to compress more than the golf ball on contact with the club. So that interaction is going to happen over a longer time and there's going to be a smaller average force. So we've shown that here. And finally, the sponge ball, you should know that this is going to be the least hardest material or the softest material of the three. And so this is going to experience the smallest average force as this is applied over the longest time. So you see the longest time there and the smallest average force at this point here. And in this example, although you may not have noticed it, the impulse is the same in each case since the area under the graph is equal. So if we were to calculate the area under the graph for the golf ball, for the tennis ball and the sponge ball, then we would find that we get the same answer, which means that the impulse in each case is going to be the same. Now, when you're answering questions involving force time graphs and you're trying to find the areas under the graphs, remember you'll usually be given straight lines to deal with. So you should remember that the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the breadth, whereas the area of a triangle is equal to a half times the base times the height. And those two relationships should help you when you're calculating areas. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.